Hey everyone, I hope you're enjoying your summer. I know I am, um, but I'm in a little bit of a mood right now, so I wanted to kind of share with you uh, my culture shock experience in Japan. Because it's still fresh within me, I thought it was a great opportunity to share it with you guys. But uh, yeah, I really thought I'd be done with culture shock. I'm reaching almost my two year anniversary, and I really thought I've experienced all of the confusion and all the frustration, all the discombobulation that happens, but you're never really done. And you can prepare and you can open your mind and you can say, I'm open to anything. And then it still just rears its ugly head. It does this, whatever that means. So basically, uh, I'm going to present an example, but it, it has really nothing to do with the specific details of this situation is going to happen, you know, at the at the mall and at the cafe. It's going to happen at home. It's going to happen when the mail carrier comes. It's going to happen at the recycling station. Uh, but here's just an example. I'm not upset about going to the market or dealing with people there. I'm not upset about anything particularly there. It's just it happened to hit me as a culture shock. So. One of the points today was that I felt ganged up on. I'm just driving into the market. I Because it's Obon, it's like a um, kind of Japanese holiday week where family gets together and kind of remembers family members. Anyway, it's a big event where people kind of get together and families are home. Um, but I just went to the market and it was kind of a madhouse. And you kind of, as I was coming up, I realized, okay, it's going to be kind of crazy. So I'm, I'm pulling in and kind of even before you enter the stage, there are these people who want to, so if this is the, the entrance and you're supposed to turn in like this and go straight in like this, there are people who want to really take a shortcut and they're going to veer through, diagonally through the exit so that they can park somewhere over here when you know, usually you just want to go straight in and then take a right or a left to where the parking is. But people that just want to do, 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 brrr. And here's the thing, there's already so much commotion happening in the parking lot that even just at the entrance, you're not going to be able to easily go right or left once you enter. So what happens is they go in and go like this and they block the intersection. So that means that nobody can go in and nobody can go out and it's just a cluster. It is very frustrating. And yes, this happens in America. Yes, this happens in any country where there are cars. Yes, it's not Japan specific. And no, I don't think that all Japanese drivers are just inconsiderate and careless. It just means that today when I was in a mood, I recognized it as a culture shock and it hurt. It, it hurt. It just sucks. So I felt ganged up on in that respect that like, I'm just trying to go to the, the, the market. I've just got four things on my list. Um, you know, just just let me know if if the people who are in cars can get your act together. That kind of was the epilogue to this situation. So I'm able to park safely. Uh, I just can't believe it. I'm used to culture shock by this point. So I'm just kind of like, you know, let it go, whatever. And so let's go inside. And so as you can imagine, it's it's all, it's also a madhouse inside. And so it's uh, the market just opened. So all of the workers are busy putting out produce and restocking items. So the aisles are already clogged. There are, you know, eager families trying to pick up the materials they need to uh, to have their families over for Obon. And so there are a lot of people and a lot of traffic and a lot of things in the aisles. So I realized, okay, I'm just going to go very deliberately in my path. I know exactly where in the market I need to go. I'm like the most, I'm like the most low maintenance customer in the whole market, or so I think. And so, you know, I'm waiting behind the old ladies and that's fine. There are old ladies everywhere. It's not Japan specific, but there's an old lady ahead of me and another old lady and then this other lady who's like, she's in the aisle and she's kind of going like this, but you know, she kind of doesn't know what she's doing. Then, oh, carrots! Oh, wow! I'm, I'm, I'm facing this way. I'm blocking this way. But, you know, I noticed there are carrots there, and it's really important for me not to, not to, move, my 
my cl cluster to the carrots so that I can, you know, fully take in the situation. No, I want to make sure that I'm blocking this way, I'm occupying this space, but, hmm, I'm kind of premeditating those carrots over there. Hmm, and the whole time, we we're kind of blocked away. We can't go through this space because it's, there's, it's her contemplative real estate, right? She's kind of claimed this whole aisle as her own, that she's not going to let anyone pass her. Um, don't get in the way of me and my carrots. Uh, of course not, of course not. So... Of course, I'm being very patient and I'm just taking deep breaths and I've got my basket and I'm ready to go and I've got my list and I know exactly, like I know it's just like, it's just four steps that way. Like I know it's right there. So I'm just taking a deep breath. It's just shopping. It's just the market. It's no big deal. It's Obone. Of course it's busy. It's just culture shock. It's no big deal. You can get over it. So I'm just trying to, you know, breathe and do my affirmations and just saying, you know, I'm not going to have a meltdown in a store. I'm not going to do it. I'm cool. I'm not that foreigner, you know. So, you know, I finally get to the lettuce and I, I get my lettuce. And so now I'm going to walk kind of around the perimeter of the store to get my other things. You know, I've got my milk. Um, I got my ginger. And so now it's time to get in the line. And so what's the biggest mistake you can do either at the airport or at a market line is to get behind grandma. There was a grandma and she looked like she was done. She looked like she was like on the very final stage of her purchase. I really thought that, you know, there are a couple lines with like um, middle-aged people and they've got, you know, like a basket that's half full. So they're going to be a little longer. I'm going to, I'm going to put my bet on grandma. I'm, I'm it's going to be fine. This time is going to be fine. So I'm getting in line and I'm behind grandma. And so I'm kind of listening to the, the, the clerk talked to her about, you know, um, you know, do you have your point card? And like, your total is going to be da, da, da. And of course, grandma has an epiphany. My family's in town. Why don't I order two watermelon at the register? Two watermelons? I've lived in Japan so long. I don't know if you say watermelons or watermelon. Melon. I want to order some melon. I want to order a watermelon. Anyway. <laughs> what is English? But... I, and that's the thing, I've never ordered produce at the register, so I don't know if it's, if that's how you normally do it. And then, so, uh, of course, she says, like, I want this particular type of watermelon, can you get this for me? And so the clerk leaves her register and goes into the produce section so that she can grab the extra fruit for Grandma, and, and that's great! Like, I love Grandma, and I love this old lady, and I want her to have all the delicious watermelons she wants. There's nothing I would rather have than her enjoy delicious watermelon with her family for Obon. It's tradition. But she said, I want two watermelon and the clerk comes back with one watermelon and I know that this is, the watermelon's gonna hit the fan. So grandma says, what's going on? And she says, this is the last one of this size, but you know, it's delicious and juicy and it looks like a good size. Maybe it's enough for, you know, instead of two watermelon, maybe this one is okay. And she said, well, no, I probably need two watermelons. So can you just, would you, could you, could you, uh, could you just, would you mind like just checking one more time? You know, go back to the same proto section you just were and then keep your eyes peeled and maybe like a new watermelon has, has grown in the meantime. So, um, maybe, and so she says, okay. And the clerk goes to the produce section looking for a watermelon and, you know, she doesn't want to come back empty handed. No, not for grandma. No, not for Obone. What if she disappoints the whole family? So she, the clerk gets another watermelon, a different type. And I know that these are not identical watermelon. Like this simply won't do. So the clerk offers the watermelon to the lady and she says, oh, this one's actually um, a bigger size, so it's uh, double price. So um, wh what do you think? Um, two watermelons? She says, so this ne. Which I don't know if I've talked about this, but so this ne is basically the, well, what do you think? Or like, oh, really? Or like, huh, I hadn't imagined that. Or like, it's this filler word that kind of gives an opportunity for the other person in the conversation to offer a suggestion. So this ne, it's kind of like a stalling tactic. Although it can be used just as a 
そうですね。Okay. You make a decision, you know. It's a really useful go to phrase, but in this, in this situation, it really just meant そうですね。So bring me just one more of the original watermelon that I asked for. Like, simple as that. Just create a watermelon for me. そうですね。そうですね。And so, ですね。<laughs> Eventually, the lady says, Yeah, I'll take one big watermelon and one little watermelon. And as delighted and relieved as I am that she's making a choice, now she's got to ring it up and put it onto her cart. And then she's got to re ring her point card. And then she's got to fumble through and pay with exact change and find that one end coin that I just simply can't find that coin. And by this time, I mean, I'm worried that the milk that I put in my basket has spoiled because I've been sitting in line and just Cringing over every single decision that has. I mean, I, I, I was about to offer, like, oh,、um, can I help you grab the watermelon? Like, I'm really strong. Like, I can definitely get, get this for you. But of course, I mean, that would have been really awkward, you know? In culture shock situations, I'm not usually the confrontational one. I'm not going to say, like, hey, what's the problem? Can we move it along, please? I'm more of like the, uh, uh, I can't believe it. This is sweat. This,、um, like from animation, Japanese animation, like, <laughs> why can't we just hurry this up? And there are like these、uh, blue lines over my eyes, just like, <laughs> lady, come on. I- I'm just trying to bring, get some spinach and just trying to bring some ginger home for my family for Obone. <laughs> so. I、uh, basically all of my vertebra have condensed on themselves, and I just cannot believe this is taking so long. And she just can't decide if she doesn't realize that everybody's in the line behind her. Why does she just say hi and then be over? I, I just can't believe it. And by the time that I've, I've realized that I might die here in line, the clerk at the next register says, Oh, uh, Sumo San, you can come to my aisle, I'll ring you out. Oh. Oh. Someone opened a register, and now I can check out the way I expected to. That's great. Hearing myself say this out loud, I know this sounds like the most petty, entitled, like, what? You have, like, no stamina as a human. You can't even wait in line behind an old lady. What? You hate all old women? What? You hate women? Like, Th- that is not the case. I want to kind of restate that it has nothing to do with the specific details of this situation. It's the paradigm of where you're already kind of powerless because you can't speak the language, and you're already kind of powerless because you don't really know like, the ins and outs. You already feel kind of cramped because you're behind a, a stopped force and you're being pushed from behind by people's glares and people's、uh, just their. Aura pushing you this way, and then th- this block is facing you this way. And so you feel so cramped, and you feel like, How did I get here? Did I ever have a life before this moment? What, what, what am I doing here on this planet? You know, you have an existential dilemma. It has nothing to do with being an impatient person in line, and like, Aren't you happy you have running water? Aren't you happy that you've got a job? And aren't you happy for all these things? How can you be so ungrateful? That's not what culture shock is about. Culture shock is about. Kind of like a switch is flipped in your head, and you kind of go into panic mode, kind of fight or flight, or you kind of realize you're in the Hunger Games and you have to decide okay, how am I going to get out of this, or how am I going to escape this jungle, or how am I going to climb over this obstacle? It becomes this fight or flight and has nothing to do with like how patient you are, and how kind you are, and how much capacity for human compassion you have. It's really just dun 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 Culture shock sucks, and it's something I thought I'd be over by now. But I remember, I feel like the celestial justice, like all of the planets lined up so that my, pla- my, my path would be blocked, and that the things would go slower, and that people would like drive right into my path. And it's not that I'm entitled to this path, and it's not that I should be able to easily just breeze through a market, and I should get VIP access to all the registers before everyone else. That's not what this is about. I'm just trying to share that culture shock sucks and you didn't, you never really get over it. And I wanted to share this experience not only just to vent and kind of get it off my chest, but also to show that you're going to freak out over really petty stuff and you're going to feel powerless over the most stupid, benign thing. Get ready for it.
embrace it. As we say in Japan, soul doesn't it? Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I, I hope I kind of illustrated what Culture Shock is about, at least here in Japan. I'm still loving it. I'm still really thankful for my life and for my job and for my friends here and for my friends back home and for everything. I'm really thankful, you know, I'm, I'm helping the planet. This is great. But sometimes it's just too much. <laughs> I'm cool. I'm grateful. I'm abundant. I'm, I'm cool. But sometimes it really just rolls you through the mud, you know? So thanks for watching. And I can't wait to go home. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye.